The tensions between China and the United States have escalated significantly in the past two years since Joe Biden assumed the presidency. It is often likened to a Cold War, comparable to the one between the United States and the former Soviet Union. However, China poses a more formidable challenge than the USSR, as it competes with and surpasses the United States in various aspects, including military and technology. Over the past century, the United States has surpassed Great Britain to become the world's leading power. The First and Second World Wars reduced the British Empire to a regional power with no global influence. Additionally, Great Britain has become a follower of the United States in terms of foreign policy, lacking an independent stance. The actions of Donald Trump, such as walking ahead of the late Queen during his visit to Britain, demonstrated America's arrogance. Consequently, Great Britain has downgraded itself to a lesser position, competing with Canada and Australia to be the best ally to the United States. British ministers, including some prime ministers, appear to be more loyal to the United States than members of the British Parliament. Despite being smaller than many Chinese provinces, Britain provides the second largest amount of military aid to Ukraine, second only to the United States. This is concerning, given Britain's deteriorating domestic situation. The shortest-serving former Prime Minister of Britain, Liz Truss, will visit Taiwan in May 2023 and it is important for the public to understand the reasons and motivations behind her visit. In the past, Japan posed a threat to the United States, and in the 1980s, Western countries, led by the United States, pressured Japan into signing the Plaza Accord, which resulted in Japan's stagnant economy for nearly four decades. However, Japan still maintains a significant economy, albeit a quarter the size of America's. When discussing Japan's lost decades, it is essential to consider its global investments, as GDP alone is a distorted indicator of a country's national wealth. The United States is utilizing Japan as a counterbalance to China's rapid rise. Japan's militarization introduces more uncertainties to security in the Asia-Pacific region. Japan and Taiwan can be discussed in a separate chapter to address the issues surrounding them. The former Soviet Union, being the third global threat defeated by the United States, is a topic that has been covered extensively in previous videos. Nonetheless, the U.S. still considers Russia as its direct enemy and continues to utilize Moscow as a tool to manipulate Europe. Over the past three decades, NATO has consistently expanded eastward, which led to Russia launching the Ukraine war to alleviate pressure from the military alliance that should have dissolved with the collapse of the Soviet Union. The European Union became the fourth threat that Washington sought to dismantle, especially before the euro became the legal tender of the European Union. Currently, over 80% of global transactions use the U.S. dollar as an intermediary medium. The Ukraine war is believed by analysts to serve as a means to target both Russia and the European Union. The numerous sanctions imposed on Moscow have severely impacted European countries, particularly Germany, which can no longer access Russia's affordable energy resources as before. Britain, Japan, the Soviet Union, and the European Union have all posed military or economic threats to the United States but the U.S. has managed to prevent them from challenging its global dominance. China is now the fifth adversary that the U.S. aims to defeat or, as President Joe Biden put it, outcompete. However, it is not an easy task for the U.S. to outcompete China. For over 2,000 years, China has stood at the forefront of the world, both militarily and economically, for the majority of the past 3,000 years. It is a civilization composed of diverse cultures. The Chinese people possess the ability to absorb theories and technologies from other nationalities, much like a sponge. Throughout history, nomadic invaders from the north, such as the Hans, Mongols, and Manchus, have become part of the Chinese population. It is unfortunate that the ancestors of European colonists were not as strong when facing Mongol invasions in Europe, and they did not occupy China as they did India. Otherwise, hundreds of millions of Westerners might have become part of the Chinese family, and China could have had over 100 ethnic minorities instead of 55. 
The Chinese characters have been the cornerstone of a continuous civilization that has spanned over 5,000 years. While different provinces may have their own dialects, the written language remains the same. This is also one of the significant reasons why China has not fragmented like Europe, which has split into numerous small nations. Now, this country has become a direct competitor to the United States on almost all fronts, and a clash between the two sides seems inevitable. This is why we have previously stated that peace or a truce between China and the U.S. could only last for a maximum of one year when Joe Biden assumed the presidency in early 2021. The Biden administration has been determined to outcompete China in the past two years, following their unsuccessful attempts to contain China with the so-called forced labor issue in Xinjiang. For almost two years, Taiwan has been the center of attention. The United States does not act alone in its approach to Taiwan, instead, it aligns with allies such as France, Germany, Britain, Czech Republic, and Lithuania, among others. It sends members of Congress to Taiwan, undermining the One China principle. The U.S. military has even deployed over 200 service members to the island to provide training to Taiwanese soldiers. There have been hints that the U.S. would not abandon Taiwan in the event of a potential civil war between Beijing and Taipei. Washington aims to turn Taiwan into another Ukraine, although few believe that U.S. troops would be able to protect the island effectively. In the aftermath of the war in Sudan, the U.S. government evacuated over a hundred diplomats from the U.S. Embassy on April 22, 2023. However, there were still more than 16,000 American citizens remaining in the war-torn country. Surprisingly, the United States showed little concern for the well-being of those expatriates amidst the conflict. While politicians, including Congress members in Washington, often boast about America's democracy, human rights, and freedom, they have refused to repatriate their own people from Sudan, where some struggle to survive due to limited access to food, water, and other essentials. Their failure to rescue their citizens in distress raises doubts about how Taiwan can expect American soldiers to defend the island when Beijing seeks to reunify it. The members of Congress on Capitol Hill, some of whom lack the ability to physically fight for Taiwan, are unable to support the island mentally. These so-called politicians and lawmakers in Washington, with or without intelligence, display arrogance and ignorance akin to the Canada geese causing traffic on busy roads in Toronto. Although these bipedal creatures may disrupt the city's traffic, they are far less quarrelsome and chaotic than the eloquent orders exchanged in government buildings and Congress halls, where attempts to challenge China are made through rhetoric alone. Since the outbreak of the pandemic in late 2019, the United States has persistently stigmatized China, attempting to isolate it from the rest of the world. Ironically, the U.S. government claims not to seek a cold war with Beijing and even hopes that China will rescue the deteriorating U.S. economy, as it did in 2008 when China purchased $800 billion of U.S. government bonds. Since Joe Biden assumed the U.S. presidency, he has not met with China's President Xi Jinping, and the latter has been actively avoiding such a meeting. It appears that China has closed off all channels of communication with the United States. Following the U.S. downing of China's weather balloon using its advanced F-22 stealth fighter, Beijing has suspended all interactions with the U.S. government, despite Washington's persistent efforts to send its top officials to Beijing. U.S. Secretary Blinken recently announced his plan to visit Beijing in 2023, but China has not responded or shown any courtesy in return. Beijing no longer sees the need to deal with the U.S. politely or diplomatically. Since China's foreign minister, Cheng Gang, left Washington, there has been no Chinese ambassador in the United States, an unprecedented situation that demonstrates China's indifference towards Washington's happiness or concerns. This week, China's top diplomat Wang Yi and America's Sullivan met in Vienna, but we do not anticipate any significant progress. In previous warnings, we caution China not to trust the words of U.S. politicians, and this caution has proven valid over the past two decades. Currently, China not only has the audacity to ignore the U.S., but it also possesses the strength to face America's threats. Just a few days ago, China's CCTV announced a breakthrough, 
claiming that its anti-stealth radars could detect all stealth fighters and bombers. China is increasing its nuclear warheads and likely already has over 1,000. Although the U.S. possesses more than 5,000 nuclear warheads and could theoretically eliminate China multiple times, China's ability to destroy the United States once or twice would be more than sufficient. It is important to note that a nuclear war would be the last resort for both countries. Furthermore, the U.S. would struggle to win a conventional war without air superiority over China. The flaws in its F-35 and retiring F-22 fighters make them vulnerable to China's anti-stealth radars. Additionally, both countries have the capability to destroy each other's satellites, rendering GPS-guided weapons useless. In a hypothetical scenario where the two nations had to fight with primitive weapons like stones and clubs, Americans would have no chance against Chinese soldiers, even if their kung fu skills are not as legendary as Bruce Lee's or Jackie Chan's. In summary, the U.S. and China are unlikely to engage in direct military conflict. The United States may need to tolerate China's peaceful rise and its return to historical prominence in the coming decades. However, the U.S. and its allies could potentially use proxy wars in Taiwan and the South China Sea to hinder China's growth. The U.S. might encourage China's neighbors, such as Japan, South Korea, the Philippines, Australia, and Vietnam, to provoke China and even instigate a regional war to impede its progress. Therefore, Beijing must demonstrate political wisdom in resolving disputes, avoiding direct conflicts with concerned nations, and cultivating as many friendships as possible. Beijing has already made progress in establishing new standards and shaping a new world order. The world is increasingly recognizing China as a new global leader. In conclusion, we believe that the U.S. will not remain the sole global superpower, and its global dominance is diminishing. The so-called rules-based world order is collapsing, giving way to a multipolar world. Washington is no longer the center of the world, whether one believes it or not.